over to our speaker for today, who is, uh, I just have to give you this, is somebody I'm super impressed with, somebody who I met through the Fast Track program over at Midlands Technical College, and she is about educating artists how to not be starving artists. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And then she's also brought with her an artist entrepreneur to share her story too. So it's a little bit of a different setup today, but certainly after Joy speaks for a few minutes, we'll be glad to ask her some questions. And then she'll turn the mic over to Sarah and we'll hear about Sarah's journey and we'll ask her some questions as well too. So please help me welcome Joy Young from the South Carolina Arts Commission. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Turn this around. So I am so glad to be here. Let's see what we have to do to get this sucker going. Tap it maybe. Mm -hmm. Give it a few seconds. And the best laid plans, right? Best laid plans. Best laid plans. Nothing. Wanna... So I'm using the US this one. Hello, Facebook folks. So I'm Joy Young with the South Carolina Arts Commission. So glad to be here with you. Um, the work I do with the Arts Commission is all about arts entrepreneurship, and we're wanting to make sure that artists in South Carolina have opportunities for a thriving, it's over on this side, for a thriving and sustainable career. The Arts Commission just celebrated 50 years. The Arts Commission is a state agency run by this is just the advancer. Yeah. The uh, Arts Commission is a state agency that is governed by a board of commissioners. Why is this important? Because as a state agency, we do receive feedback from the public. The three areas that we understood that were critical to uh, a thriving arts environment in South Carolina were arts education, um, community development, and artists' abilities to have a career. We have uh, a continuum of services now that serve the arts in South Carolina from personal development. You know, that idea of the artist thinking to themselves, can I do this? Can my work be received? Can I make money? Or the belief that exposure is going to be that thing. You know, you've heard someone say to an artist, hey, we want you to perform for free for exposure. <laughs> what does exposure do to you folks? <laughs> exposure can kill you. <laughs> exposure can kill you. And let's face it, free doesn't pay the lights, nor does free pay the bills. Our work is about helping artists really see themselves as entrepreneurs. So our four programs under a continuum of services called Arts Grow SC are Artist You, then we have Artist Ventures Initiative, we have Arts <coughs> Grow SC, and we have the AIR program. So we still don't have it up. And that's fine. So we'll just keep on talking. So Artist U. Yes. Nope, not yet. So Artist U is about the artist. Artist U. The question the artists have to ask themselves what do I need to be successful in my arts practice? So let me ask a question, folks. What are the arts? Talk to me. What are the arts? What are the arts? Uh, painting, music. Painting, uh, music, yeah, sculpture, dance. Like, yeah. What'd you say? Video. Video. Performance. Performance. Literature. Literature. Expression. Expression. Any type of creative medium, I would say. Any type of creative medium. And that creative medium can create jobs. We're talking also about architecture, right? We're talking about that person that creates jewelry. But we're also talking about those industries that reside in a culture. <laughs> okay. So we're also talking about then an industry that exists within a culture. And so some of those cultural art forms might be basket weaving. In South Carolina, pottery, catawba pottery. So we're really talking about the kinds of artists and art forms that exist, not just in a place, but that creative endeavor. So the three areas we're going to talk about are our programs and services. We're going to talk to Sarah, one of our artist entrepreneurs, and answer your questions. So we just talked about what are the arts. 
economic impact is critical to this work. Let's face it, we do have to pay bills. We are creating into and adding to the economy. In South Carolina, the arts create $9.7 billion in economic impact. We are creating jobs. We're not filling jobs. So some of the difference I'll talk about, we will bring a corporation to South Carolina and give them tax incentives to reside so that people can fill the jobs as opposed to the artist and creative endeavors, the creative economy, they're truly creating their own jobs. They're not job fillers. And they don't ship off to Mexico. They don't ship off anywhere else. So we're really talking about an economy that's place-based that stays here. I introduced our programs. Artist U, Artist Ventures, Arts Grow and Air. But there are some examples right here in your community, and I want to ask Sarah to please come forward and share with us a little bit about her work, AfroStyle Initiatives. She's received a grant from the South Carolina Arts Commission, and she'll share a little bit about her work. Welcome, Sarah, please. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Ms. Joyce said, uh, my name is Sarah and I'm the founder of Africa Style Initiatives. And Africa Style is basically promoting the African culture through fashion and food. I am an African designer. That means I take any European or any design or clothing that you have on today and remake it in the African print. That's promoting the African culture. And also I do cater for as an African care that um, I do cater African food as well. Now with the clothing and these um, designs that I do make, I also organize fashion shows twice a year, in February and in July. Um, I do have a couple of my products that I do make. These are mostly made by me here in the US and sold right here as well. Um, part of my business is also promoting entrepreneurship and so I do have a group of people that I do work with or train in Ghana, West Africa that makes part of my designs as well. So, um, Ms. Joy, if you could please help me. Now, I do cater for all ages, all genders. So, from babies to older people, anybody that can wear an African product, I can recreate something for you. And for the gentleman, I have this. You can pass it around. So I had applied to the Arts Commission um, a couple of months ago, and that's because I've been in business for four years. And as you can see, I do have a small truck that I transport my inventory with. I do go throughout South Carolina and Georgia to sell my products. And so I applied to the commission to expand my business, and that's to build a mobile boutique. And what the mobile boutique is going to do is have all my inventory on board as I travel um, to all these places. And so it's just like a boutique, you go in as a storefront, you come into the boutique and find all these products in to be able to shop as well. And whilst we do have the mobile boutique, I'll be able to teach basic sewing skills to anybody that's interested. So in other words, I'm selling my products, giving back to the community, and also making money at the same time. So that's how I got involved with the South Carolina Commission of Arts. So we're going to have questions afterwards of Sarah. You want to show a few of your other products? Sure. So as I mentioned, I do custom make items. If you have anything in mind um, from home accessories to decorations, anything that you can think of, I can recreate with African print. And so um, these are some handbags that I, we recreated with African print. Um, of course, we have sandals. Like I said, anything that you can think of, we can recreate it. Give her a round of applause, please. <laughs> So through the Artist Ventures program, what we were able to do is to help Serwa um, receive seed funds to begin the process of securing a mobile boutique. We've done this work now for the past uh, 10 years. 
where we've given artists grants of $5,000, grants, that means they don't have to repay, to begin an artist venture. This is about earning income. This is about securing their own places in their communities through their art. Artist U is that program that's all about helping the artist think about themselves as that sustainable, as that, let's, let's face it, embraced artist. <laughs> artist U is a free program that allows artists to come in for two to three days for a full workshop that talks about making your life a sustainable career. Um, this is one of the images of our workshops. We have workshops all over the state. We'll have some of those getting started here in the fall. So if you're interested, definitely come on to our website and you'll learn more about when those workshops are uh, coming on board. Um, Barb and, um, Barb and, what is his name? Bob Streeter, you know the Streeters? Conway Glass? Yes, yes, yes. Um, actually, Barb Streeter has art in one of the um, public libraries, Richland Libraries. They received a $5,000 grant for a unique project within their business. Let's see. You see this video screen? They have in their studio a space for people to come in. They can do glass blowing parties. And their headsets were purchased through our grant. So imagine a glass blower at the fire with his head down and the video of that being shown on this screen. So they came to us with this idea that they could have groups come in to their business for this purpose. We funded that work, an artist entrepreneur. They were in downtown Conway. They moved from downtown Conway into their own space just outside. So visit Conway Glass. Another artist, Middleton Made Knives, Quentin Middleton. He resides in St. Steve, excuse me, in um, um, St. Matthews, South Carolina. So what's neat about his work is he's producing knives for the major chefs in Charleston, South Carolina. How many of you have been to a restaurant in Charleston lately? Mm -hmm. Some pretty good food. Well, let me tell you, he's doing customized knives. He came to the Arts Commission because he needed a larger facility to build his studio. He was in a five by six shed. We were able to help him expand to a 10 by 10 shed to make all the difference in his work. So this is him in his new facility that our funds help, help to build. So Arts Grow, what is Arts Grow all about? Arts Grow is about taking the funds that we offer through our grants and leveraging those funds for larger kinds of initiatives. Christine Eady, how many of you have heard of tintype photographs? Tintype, how many of you know Christine? Yes, yes, yes. You love her work. She really is. So tintype are those photographs that look about like this, old-timey kinds of photographs. Christine actually started with us through the Artist U program, that three-day workshop. She went from Artist U to the Artist Ventures, that $5,000 grant. She bought her first trailer with her $5,000 grant. She came back to us with a loan, because we do now have a loan, a partner to provide loans. Loans, yes, artists can get loans. <laughs> How about that? To develop a new type of mobile studio. What's so neat about the work that Christine is able to do now with this mobile studio? She's able to go to the reenactor battlegrounds. You know those guys that dress up in soldier uniforms in 90 degree weather and play on the battlefield and do war games? She's able to participate in those because she's providing photography that's authentic to the times. And let me tell you, she says that because of this purchase of this new mobile studio, 
she is getting invited to participate in, the, yes, we've got a witness, I can testify, right? She's getting invited to places just because of this purchase she's made. So she's $5,000, took that $5,000, bought her first studio. That mobile studio worked for a while. It was just a regular studio. But she's created an authentic looking mobile gallery, mobile studio that becomes part of an event. So, we've talked about Artist You is about the person. Artist Ventures is about grant money. Arts Grow is about leveraging grant money with loan funding. Here's another artist in Spartanburg, Sparkle City Improv. This organization needed to get just basic equipment to be able to perform. Rather than a grant or a loan, she participated in our matched savings programs. So what is the regular current interest rate on a savings account? Lousy. How about that? Lousy. We uh, are participating with matched savings programs. So if you save a dollar, I'll give you a dollar. If you save $10, I'll give you $10. If you save $500, I'll give you $500. What, what'd you say, what'd you say? Sounds pretty good. There are no strings attached. There are no strings attached. We have programs now that will match qualifying artists, and I do say qualifying, because for some of the programs, there are some income limitations. Um, but we will match up to $1,000. And that match, depending upon where you're located, can be matched twice. So if you save a thousand, I've got a funding partner that will give a thousand, and the Arts Commission will give a thousand. Does that sound pretty good? Yeah. Sounds really good. What are the strings attached to that? That you use the funding to support your business. So in her case, she only had to save five hundred dollars. Her return was thirty-five hundred dollars because of the funding partners we were able to line up to support this organization. So we're doing all of this work in order to help artists create sustainable businesses. The matched savings program is called the IDA program. So you need to take a picture of this screen right here mm -hmm. because that circled piece is the private link to apply for an IDA savings account. This is not a public link, folks. Take your picture. Let me get out of the way for Facebook folks. Do your screenshot, because this is not a link you will find on the Arts Commission website. This is the application to the matched savings program. Everyone got your picture? Because I'm going to change the screen. <laughs> All right, so our final program is the AIR program, and that matches individual artists within their communities to develop a business that has a community impact. So what might that look like? We're not sure. We've just begun this relationship. <laughs> I have to be honest. We've just begun this relationship with the AIR Institute of Berea College, but we know what success they've had. So. One of the examples that really speaks to us uh, as it relates to food ways, traditional food ways, is imagine a community saying, hmm, we're a food desert. We'd like to incorporate farmers, um, um, farmers markets, as well as um, utilizing local kitchens. And uh, a, a caterer came in, said to the community, I can help develop that. In exchange, the community says, we will buy from you. The caterer says, we will give back to the community. We will give back. So it becomes this investment into the community through some business endeavor. Yes, we want it to be the arts, but we see such potential and such opportunity in launching here in South Carolina. And we were here a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about us launching AIR in South Carolina. So we imagine maybe someone like, who's got a creative endeavor in here? Give me a <laughs> Tell me about it. Let's see. Who's, 
Come on, raise your hand. Tell me. Tell me. What's your creative endeavor? What's your creative thought? I'll, I'll tell you about mine. Go for it. So we are a writer's community, and we have a radio program that talks about fiction writing and writing as a craft. Mm -hmm. And we do it every Saturday, like a little writing workshop. Yes. That's broadcast for free, that's kind of podcasts, and things like that. So it's all self-supported writers that are paying to have that radio show access. So now imagine you are part of a community. Let's, let's say maybe it's a historic community. And you say to the community, we want to capture your history and the AIR program will take you through a process to where a family may come together and say, we'll pay you, artist, you writer, to write our family story. That then becomes information to help the community coalesce around its <coughs> own history. I'm in. You're in. Sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> So it's a, an out-of-the-box approach to thinking about artists as business in their communities that give back to the artists that fill and feed the business that give back to the community. That is the premise and the hope we have for the AIR program here in South Carolina. So what else do we have? Artist U, we've talked about Artist Ventures, Arts Growing AIR. We have an event coming up. You might want to take a picture of this, although this is in social media already. We have an event coming up at the Indie Grits Lab, September 21st, where we'll dive a lot deeper and see other examples of artists who have engaged in our programs, who received funding, and how they are using their funding to make their arts business grow. So I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge our partners, so I'm gonna to have to do this off the top of my head. Central Community Foundation is providing funds for their service area, and they serve 11 counties. I have three slots for that matched savings program of up to $2,000. So if you are in the service area of the Community Foundation of South Carolina, and you do not have to meet an income qualification, you fill out this application, you show your business idea, you go through business training, and you commit to saving your funds with regular deposits over the course of six months, you can be the recipient of one of the IDA savings program funds. Another partner we have who's funding is the Coastal Community Foundation, serving the low country of South Carolina. We have grants available for arts entrepreneurship. So if you actually live in the low country, or if you know artists who are in the low country, let them know. The Arts Commission has funding for you. Um, then we have our regular grant program, the Artist Ventures Initiative, that's $5,000 in grant funding. So there are funding resources. Our partners, Whitman's <coughs> Technical College, who led a wonderful um, fast track for artists and creatives. Much, many thanks to Mr. Tom Ledbetter. Another partner is the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities. Thank you. Another partner is the African American Heritage Foundation. And what they're doing is providing an online resource that captures arts history to include artists of African American descent or those who have significantly impacted African American history, heritage, or culture in South Carolina. So we want to say thank you so much to our partners. So let's get Sarah back up here and let's see what kind of questions we may have.